Assalamualaikum, selamat pagi, salam sejahtera, dan salam kampus rahmah kepada semua pelajar, ibu bapa, guru-guru yang sedang menonton program kita pada pagi ini. Selamat kembali ke program STEM Speaker Series Anjuran U Science dengan kolaborasi My STEM Ambassador University Malaysia Sabah. Kepada mereka yang baru saja mengikuti STEM Speaker Series U Science, program ini merupakan usaha bersama di antara U Science University Malaysia Sabah dan Institut Penyelidikan Marine Borneo University Malaysia Sabah yang bertujuan untuk menyampaikan topik-topik STEM yaitu sains, teknologi, kejuruteraan, dan matematik yang unik dan menarik yang telah digubal khas oleh subjek meta expert bagi setiap bidang yang bertujuan untuk meningkatkan minat pelajar sekolah, guru, dan komuniti untuk menceburkan diri dalam bidang STEM. Dimaklumkan bahawa untuk sesi hari ini, ECGL akan diberikan kepada pelajar sekolah dan pelajar Universiti Malaysia Sabah. Tetapi untuk mendapatkan ECGL itu, pelajar perlu mengisi borang kehadiran pada akhir program ini. Jadi diminta semua peserta untuk bersama kami sehingga program tamat. Sekiranya, sekiranya terdapat sebarang pertanyaan kepada pihak penceramah, peserta boleh utarakan dalam kotak chat pada sebelah kanan YouTube live ini dan soalan itu akan dikumpul dan akan dijawab pada akhir program ini nanti. Baik, tanpa membuang masa, hari ini kami akan menjemput Puan Wahidah Tunggu Sultan iaitu Ahli Akademik daripada Institut Pengajian Marine Borneo University Malaysia Sabah. Sebelum itu, izinkan saya memperkenalkan biodata beliau terlebih dahulu. Beliau merupakan pensyarah akuakultur di Institut Penyelidikan Marine Borneo University Malaysia Sabah. Beliau telah terlibat dalam penyelidikan berkaitan rumpai laut sejak tahun 2013. Beliau juga bakal menamatkan pengajian PhD pada tahun ini dengan dengan kajian berkaitan pendokumentasian baru rumpai laut hijau spesies unik iaitu latok tweed di Sabah. Tanpa membuang masa, kami akan mempersilakan Puan Wahidah Tunusna untuk membentangkan ceramah beliau pada hari ini yang bertajuk Seaweed from sea to the kitchen. Dipersilakan Puan. Terima kasih moderator kita yang segak di pagi Jumaat ni. Thank you very much. First of all, allow me to share my screen. Okay. All right. So, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. I bid to all my audiences. I can see a lot of people here. I can see, let me see at the comment first. I can see Yasimin Basir. I can see Alia Fitria. Uh, and I'm happy to see that some of my audiences are from uh, Peninsula Malaysia. Uh, I can see Muhammad Zul Husni. And I see Melissa Zaroni from SK Mar Marian Convent, Tapak, Kuala Lumpur. I'm so happy. So how are you guys doing today? Please drop some comment. And if you can hear my voice very clear and loud, uh, also please drop some comment on YouTube. I'm so happy to see all the positive comments. Hi, good morning, Kasrina. Uh, Waalaikum salam, Amir Ryan. Uh, who else? Morning, uh, Putri Kisha, Rahil, morning and Assalamualaikum. So today will be just a very casual sharing from me. I'll introduce myself. My name is Wahidatul Husna Zuldin and I'm a lecturer from Borneo Marine Research Institute, Institute Penyelidikan Marine Borneo, University of Malaysia, Sabah. So today I'll be sharing about my research subject, which is seaweed. All right. Uh, dalam erti kata lain, rumpai laut. Allow me to speak in dual language, dua bahasa, so that it will be much casual and will be much santai lah, alright. So this topic will be on rumpai laut, where we will bring the rumpai laut from from the sea all the way to our kitchen in our house, alright. Okay, so this is me in the picture. <laughs> this is during my trip uh, to South Korea. 
visiting some of the seaweed farm uh, in Korea. All right. Okay. First of all, I would like to share fun facts. Fakta menarik mengenai rumpai laut. Okay. Fun facts regarding seaweed. First fact is seaweeds are not real plants. Uh, even though it looks like broccoli, it may look like a cauliflower, but they are not real plants. Okay, rumpai laut tidak mempunyai uh, sistem akar ataupun sistem vaskular yang sama seperti tumbuhan biasa yang kita nampak di uh, yang ditanam di, di tanah lah. Okay, so they are, they are not real plant. Even though they look like one, but we call it plant-like organism. Okay, and then second fact is that there is no collagen in seaweed. I believe a lot of people in marketing who sell seaweed might uh, accidentally use the term marine collagen from seaweed okay so first of all i would like to educate people out there just to share uh, what i knew about it there's no collagen in seaweed okay collagen is found in uh, animal or human okay collagen is something it's a kind of protein that is synthesis inside animal or human okay so collagen ni hanya ditemui dalam uh, binatang, haiwan ataupun manusia. So, dalam tumbuhan tidak ada collagen. Tetapi, but there's but in there, seaweed may act as a collagen booster. Maknanya, when you eat seaweed, it can act as a collagen booster. Dia boleh membantu your collagen production in your body. But it, it does not provide collagen directly on its own lah. Okay, it does not produce any collagen. So, bear in mind, collagen only produced in animal or human okay all right so first of all i would like to ask all my audience who knows what are seaweed you may drop some comment uh, in the youtube's uh, i think youtube comment section if you know what are seaweed okay who siapa yang first time dengar about rumpai laut or maybe first time came across about seaweed oh i did not know that okay all right. So seaweed is actually a type of marine macroalgae. Okay, if we ever heard about algae, there are two types of algae, which are uh, macroalgae or microalgae. Macro means huge, besar, something that you can see using your bare eyes. Okay, micro means small, very little, that you have to use microscope to see this kind of algae, which is microalgae. So seaweeds are something macroalgae it's a marine organism because it's from the sea obviously and it's not from the freshwater area dia bukan daripada air tawar so we call it marine macroalgae marine daripada laut algae yang besar something that is tangible something that you can touch okay and they are plant like organism okay organisma yang kelihatan seperti tumbuhan but they are not real plant okay so typically seaweeds they attach to rock or corals or maybe some substrate di perairan pantai okay di kawasan pantai and believe me or not there are seaweeds that exist deep down maybe 30 meters in uh, all over down the sea daripada laut dalam ada juga rumpai laut yang wujud di laut yang dalam so believe it or not there are real things down there okay all right so we have to know the general types of seaweed we already know seaweed is something that, that is tangible, it's from the sea, it's something that is huge maybe, it's something that is uh, tangible, you can touch, you can eat, you can feel it, right? So there are three general types of seaweed. Tiga jenis rumpai laut yang very common, okay, especially di Malaysia, di mana-mana negara pun ada tiga jenis rumpai laut yang sangat common. First is brown seaweed, alright? Seaweed perang, okay? Uh, seaweed perang ni macam contoh anyone yang suka makan Japanese food, yang suka pergi sushi king atau pergi sushi zanmai, they will come across the sushi wrap, okay, yang warna hijau hitam-hitam sikit tu gunakan untuk balut sushi. That's what we use kadang-kadang nori, okay. So brown seaweed, laminaria species adalah kombu. If you enjoy miso soup, they will use kombu inside the soup. Alright, fucus species ni, uh, type of brown seaweed juga digunakan sebagai ubat. Zaman uh, dululah and then some traditional Chinese medicine, they apply fucus species uh, to treat some disease. This one, but there is no uh, clear evidence or scientific evidence to support. But this is what the traditional people believe. 
Alright, and then another type of brown seaweed adalah sargassum species. If you jalan-jalan nearby the seashore, maybe if if uh if you are from Sabah, if you go to Tanjung Lipat in Likas, or maybe if you're from Langkawi, you may find this species being carried uh, carried away by the wave to the coastal area. So you can see this type of species lah. Alright, and then second type of seaweed is red seaweed, seaweed merah ataupun rumpai laut merah. Some of the species could be pyropia. Ini yang saya cakap tadi yang guna untuk balut seaweed lah, eh, balut sushi, right? If you love to eat sushi, you can find this species uh, as a sushi wrapper. Okay, this nori. Normally orang akan makan uh, macam snack lah. If you ever uh, had the uh, Big Bang seaweed or the takone from Thailand, very delicious. So it's called nori. Okay, and some of the species are kappa ficus species and eucuma. These are very common in Malaysia that we cultivate. Ini yang orang kata ada collagen. Uh, no, no, no. There is no collagen in these species, okay? But they do have one compound, we call it carrageenan, yang ada gelling properties. Or it's very thick and it's very jelly, like like agar-agar tu. That's why people thought it's collagen, but it's not collagen, all right? It's carrageenan. It's two different things, two different type of uh, compound. Collagen is protein, carrageenan is a type of carbohydrate. Okay, and the third type, general type is green seaweed, rumpai laut hijau. This one very beautiful. If you go to Sabah, if you ever been to Sabah or if you are from Sabah, if you went to the Filipino market in Kota Kinabalu, you'll find this species uh, sold on a plate, like five ringgit per plate and very delicious, right? If in Peninsula Malaysia, they sell it, I think, for one pack of uh, macam bekas kecil tu around 25 ringgit and quite expensive lah okay so uh, some species of green seaweed will be alva uh, kolopa kolopa species is the one very common being eaten or consumed in malaysia and some people in port dickson and langkawi started to cultivate this species they started to pelihara uh, rumpai laut species kolopa ni dalam tangki uh, di semenanjung malaysia all right okay we move forward to the global seaweed culture and demand. Okay, why do you have to culture seaweed? Of course, because of there's demand. If there is demand, then there will be a cultivation uh, process going on. Okay, so rumpai laut is not only in Asia. You can find seaweed in North America, in Latin America. Okay, Lamia is Latin America. You can find seaweed in Europe. And mostly you can find seaweed in Asia Pacific, like in Japan, in Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, and so forth. Okay, so seaweed is everywhere. Seaweed exists everywhere. It's just different species and different types that you can find within those areas and those specific regions. Okay, so this is the example of rumpai laut yang ditanam di Amerika. Uh, they have been planting kelp. Okay, kelp is a type of brown seaweed. We call it laminaria uh, as a scientific name. It's been cultivated in the United States of America. This one is in Maine. Okay, look at how big the seaweeds are. It's very big and they actually consume kelp as a snack and sometimes they, they turn it into seasoning and then sometimes they cook it as a noodle, which is very interesting. All right, I'll share that later on. And then this is seaweed farm in Semporna. If you ever been to Sabah, you should go to Semporna to see our beautiful seaweed farm. It's very nice. It's very scenic view. It's very serene and very calming a view to everyone who ever been to Semporna. Okay. And then this is an example of seaweed cultivation or seaweed aquaculture in Norway. Whoever think of Norway having seaweed cultivation and they also cultivate kelp or the laminaria species, the brown seaweed. And look at the species, very big. It's like a gigantic uh, species, right? Rumpai laut mereka besar-besar. This is in part of Europe, okay? European country. And look at the seaweed aquaculture in China, very massive. China is one of the top producer for rumpai laut and they cultivate seaweed so massive. That's why they can supply rumpai laut even to Malaysia. If you look at the uh, Sushi King punya wrapper, just ask the Sushi King waiter kan, dari mana mereka dapat uh, that seaweed? Some may uh, may answer, oh, from China, which is not surprised, right? Because China is one of the top producer for rumpai laut. 
Look at the aquaculture seaweed in Bali, Indonesia. It's very nice, like paddy field. You can touch it on the ground. If you ever been to Bali, you can touch the seaweed being planted like paddy, yeah? like like uh, paddy, tanaman paddy di Malaysia. They cultivate seaweed seperti menanam paddy. Very nice in Bali. If you ever had a chance after this COVID-19 pandemic, please visit Bali and look at the seaweed farm over there. All right. So this is maybe some kind of boring topic, but I have to tell you guys, I have to share with you guys that due to the increased world population, so when people are increasing in this world, they have demand. They demand for food. They will demand for job. So that's why aquaculture, meaning you are cultivating species from marine, species from freshwater to meet the demand, okay, to provide uh, what we call supply for food and also for job. So if there is no seaweed cultivation, it will be lesser job opportunity in aquaculture industry. Right. So besides, we know fish, we know crab, we know lobster, we know all those fish and uh, uh, marine organism. We maybe rarely know about seaweed. So as you can see in my slide, seaweed is one of the third largest aquaculture crop after the freshwater fishes and molas. Molas mean macam uh, kerang, kerangan. Okay. So seaweed is one of our top product not only in Malaysia, all or around the world, okay? Not necessarily seaweed. Uh, we also have microalgae. If you ever had spirulina capsule, those yang suka jaga kesihatan, you know, the, the high-end product, those spirulina capsule is actually a type of microalgae. Algae yang sangat kecil, sangat halus yang kita tak boleh lihat uh, dengan mata kasar. So if you can, uh, if you can see the cut, contoh the cut, uh, sunga, eh, sunga, plak kolam, you can see a lot of the green microalgae. That one is freshwater microalgae, All right? So bear in mind, algae is also a type of aquaculture product. Okay, this is another boring topic, but will be interesting for some of you who interested to be a seaweed seller. All right, who interested to market some seaweed. Okay, to be honest, seaweed. If you go to Semenanjung, if you go to Peninsula Malaysia, it might be a bit cost or a bit costly or a bit expensive because of it's not uh, easy access as what we have in Sabah, right? And also, if you go to the the foreign country of or if you travel abroad, the price of seaweed also quite high, right? That's why we we said the global seaweed market is increasing. It's accelerating because people started to be aware of the existence of this rumpai laut. Okay, they started to eat, they started to consume and rumpai laut is not only as food. Okay, if you ever heard about SK2, the, the cosmetic, the facial wash and then some of the product like Lush, Lush is from uh, US. Okay, they make soap. So the soaps are made, some of the ingredients in the soap are made from seaweed. All right, so seaweed is multi-purpose. You can extract some component from seaweed and turn it into something useful. That's why the market for seaweed, the global demand for seaweed is increasing years by years, right? So these are among the top 10 seaweed producers, among the 10 countries that produce rumpai laut. Okay, you can see that China is the number one seaweed producer now. The second country is Indonesia, our, our neighbor country. And then Philippines is the number three. And then Korea, if you ever uh, had kimbap, you know, if you love to eat kimbap, normally they use seaweed to wrap the kimbap. It's just like, normally it looks like sushi, right? But in Korea, they call it kimbap. And Korean people, they really love to eat seaweed or rumpai laut. And also uh, Japan, Malaysia. I'm so proud to see Malaysia as one of the top seaweed producer. All right? And Sabah itself, is the highest state, uh, seaweed producing state. So I'm very proud to be in Sabah and I hope people in Sabah also proud as well as in Peninsula Malaysia because we are in the same country. So we should be proud of it. And then Tanzania, Chile and Solomon Island. So these 10 countries among the top 10 seaweed producers. All right. So if, if you can see from my slide, some of the country, these are the data from 2016. Okay. If you can see some of the country, they started to cultivate. Aquaculture means you bring out the species from the sea, from the ocean, and you, you cultivate it in your place. 
in the tank or maybe in your pond, in, in column, macam tu kan. So, if you look at this uh, map, you can see Russia. Russia, they started to cultivate as well. China, India, India, even India, they also have seaweed aquaculture. Brazil, it's not surprising. It's very common. All these countries involved in seaweed cultivation. However, country like Canada, USA, some countries in the Europe, they did not allow direct uh, food or animal consumption, like very raw material to consume. So they prefer to to make it fisheries, mean tangkap fresh dari laut, tidak pelihara dalam uh, dalam tangki begitulah. Okay. Look at this slide. Hmm. This one, if you are familiar with all the flags, okay, bendera-bendera negara ni, this indicated that all these countries cultivated different kind of seaweed species. Why? Kenapa? Sebab, okay, setiap setiap negara ni mungkin ada rumpai laut yang tersendiri. Di mana rumpai laut tu, rumpai laut tu mungkin wujud di setengah kawasan sesuai dengan dia punya Uh, uh, season, dia punya weather, dia punya climate, mungkin dia punya keadaan geografi. So, it depends on the species prefers which region, which condition, which environment. Okay. Ah, look at all these beautiful pictures. Okay. These are the commercially cultivated red seaweed. Okay. Rumpai laut merah yang dikultivate, ditanam, dipelihara. Okay. As you can see here, even though we call it red seaweed, it does not necessarily mean red in color some of them are green in color okay why because the pigmentation in the species may differ right even though we call it red seaweed some of the pigmentation may differ in terms of the concentration all right but if you identify the species will be the red seaweed it's definitely red seaweed you do the genetic you do the morphological uh, identification and so forth all right And then these are the example of the commercially cultivated brown seaweed. Okay, some of the species, uh, Laminaria and Saccharina, these two species, normally being cultivate, no, normally being captured. Okay, di 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 tangkap daripada laut ataupun di di tanam di laut di bahagian bahagian Eropah ataupun China. Okay, and then look at this beautiful green seaweed, rumpai laut hijau. Very nice picture. Okay, these are the types of seaweed yang Uh, normally being cultivated. For example, di Malaysia, we cultivate kolepa. Latok lah. Ha, saya nampak ramai orang komen di YouTube, latok. Alright. Ha, jangan gaduh-gaduh di YouTube tu. Okay, we are learning about seaweed. This is very casual sharing. So, just enjoy. Okay. And then, one of the question I always ask myself. Sebelum saya kaji benda ni, saya selalu, selalu tanya diri saya. Why do people have to culture and consume seaweed? Kenapa mau makan rumpai laut? Okay, first of all, some of these seaweed have become the main food. Okay, ataupun makanan yang memang harian orang makan. Where? Di Jepun, okay, in Malaysia, Indonesia, Korea and China. That's why they cultivated these species because of high demand. People love to eat seaweed in this country. Alright. And then the second thing is because of the compound that we have in seaweed. Okay, bahan-bahan what we call compound ni. Something yang we can extract out. Kita boleh ambil daripada rumpai laut. Untuk dimasukkan dalam bahan-bahan uh, yang kita gunakan harian. Contoh macam pencuci muka, uh, sabun basuh baju, detergen. And we can put it in our milk. Okay, it's part of the ingredient that the industry use. Right? And then the third thing is because not only for food. Seaweed also being used for cosmetics. As I mentioned before, fertilizers and also some of uh, the, the what we call stabilizers, additive in some of our foods yang kita makan. Ataupun makanan-makanan yang kita nak awet lah. Alright. And then last thing is because marine algae is a type of energy collector. Maksudnya we need to cultivate it to balance our ecosystem in the sea. Alright. Okay, these are very generalized diagram of the usage of seaweed. Kegunaan rumpai laut. You may extract seaweed to get the chemical compound from it. All right. So seaweed, it it, it do it does photosynthesis just like plant. Okay. How they grow, how they survive, how they have a very good growth is because of photosynthesis process that they do. Just like normal plant. Okay. They they absorb uh, seawater, carbon dioxide, and sunlight to have energy to grow and so forth right so we can do these three process for seaweed we can extract the compound 
We can ferment the seaweed to get some alcohol or methane. We can do pyrolysis process. This one you may learn uh, somewhere, maybe in your life, maybe during your university or maybe during your, your work and so forth. So you can find that all these processes are important for the industry. All right. All right. So I would like to ask uh, all my audiences. Do you think seaweed contain any nutrient that is beneficial for our health? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Ramai yang jawab. Latuk tu sedap. Oh, tanya. Latuk tu sedap kah? Uh, you have to try by your own lah untuk rasa sedap kah tidak. Oh, ada yang percaya? Yes, ada nutrient. Okay, I'll share with you a video. Okay, to, to, to let you know that seaweed actually have some kind of nutrient. Alright, let me share the video first. Uh oh, sorry. All right, so as you can see from the video, there are some nutrients inside seaweed. However, this one you have to bear in mind, okay? Ini kena ingat. Tidak semua orang sesuai untuk makan rumpai laut. Okay, it depends on the people, the acceptance of the people. Some people may prefer the taste of the seaweed, some people might not. Okay, seaweed ni rasa asal dia masin because it's quite salty. It's from the sea, right? Okay, and then sometimes when, when the seaweed have been processed, have been purified or maybe have been washed, it's not as salty as the original seaweed as it is. Lah. Okay, but there are some nutritional content that is good for human being. All right, and it's a complete meal. Okay, it has fiber, it has carbohydrate, it has protein, it has lipids, vitamins, minerals, and metabolites and antioxidants. Okay, if you go to Indonesia, I've been to Indonesia and Philippines, some of the people who normally eat seaweed as part of their diet, they have, you know, very smooth skin. But not all of them, some of them, maybe seaweed suit their diet, all right? That's why it helps with the, maybe it boosts the collagen production, it may help in the uh, protein synthesis in the body, that's why they have a very good skin and a very good health. But Bear in mind, it might not be suitable for all of us. Maybe some of us will like the taste of the seaweed, will be suitable as part of the diet, but not all of us, all right? So it's your choice. You can choose to eat and you also can choose not to eat, all right? So I'm just sharing with you whatever nutrients that we have in seaweed. Okay. And then, ah, this is the interesting part, okay? So let's bring some seaweed to our kitchen. If you love to eat bimbimbap, okay, those who love to watch Korean drama, who love to watch, uh, I, I've never watched like actually BTS and something like that. All these Korean people, they love to make bibimbap, okay, ataupun kimbap. I'm not sure. Maybe it's called kimbap, okay? 
Okay, this kimbap is actually part of their main uh, food lah uh, di Korea. Okay, so these are very delicious actually. Uh, but I love to eat sushi more lah. <laughs> Even though it maybe taste the same, but I love to eat sushi. Okay, I love to go to Sushi King, <laughs> obviously. All right, so let's see. This is nori. Okay, if you look at my slide, nori is a type of uh, seaweed species that is used for sushi wrapping. Okay. And then there's also kombu. Kombu is a type of laminaria species. If you love to enjoy miso, hot miso soup from Japan, if you go to Sushi King, you can enjoy the miso soup. They normally will put this kombu seaweed okay, on top of the soup just to enhance the taste of the soup. All right. And then this is wakame. Okay, wakame is a type of uh, seaweed in Korea. They love to eat raw, okay, raw wakame and maybe they put some some kind of condiments i'm not sure i've never eat wakame myself and also in kelantan if you're from kelantan if you ever had kerabu sare okay kerabu sare is actually a type of rumpai laut seaweed that normally people in kelantan will eat this kerabu sare okay it's actually a gracilaria species okay and then this is the one popular in sabah seaweed salad okay this is kappa phyto species i'll share with you this recipe all right you can make it on your own at home if you have access to this seaweed okay the dry seaweed normally people use dry seaweed just soak it overnight rendam dia satu malam dalam air bersih and then keesokan paginya cuci sikit and then cut into pieces and then campurlah jus limau uh, garam gula and then tambahlah whatever that you like as condiments timun uh, mangga yang belum masak eh uh, bunga kantan, chili, uh, uh, udang kering, and any any kind of condiment that you like. Okay, so it's very uh, it's very easy recipe. Just mix everything, and then let it sit for around fifteen to twenty minutes, and it's ready to be eaten with ikan bakar, right? Grilled fish. Another recipe is fresh lato. Okay, lato sometimes sometimes people think it's very uh, pahit. Okay, it's very bitter, but it's actually not bitter. You can taste it quite salty the bitter is actually a pepperish taste the other what we call pepperish compound we call it collapin inside lato and rasa dia macam pedas pedas sikit it's not pahit it's quite pedas tangy gitu okay and then when you eat it actually lato it will pop inside your mouth macam you minum boba tu tapi boba is quite a uh, hard macam keras kan this one bila you eat dia macam ada crunchy taste okay crunchy taste tu yang buat orang suka actually but it depends on people. Sometimes people like it. Some people may not like it. All right. The recipe is just the same with the seaweed salad earlier that I shared. And then these are the one that I studied. It's quite new. Uh, it's quite uh, freshly reported in Malaysia. This one looks like 20 cent, the coin. Okay. So this is also a type of kolapa species. The taste is almost similar with uh, the lato, the normal lato that we eat. But the Japanese people like this species because it tastes quite uh, pepperish, more pepperish compared to the normal lato that we consume. Ah, look at this. This one is very fancy being served in the restaurant in Japan. They, in Japan, seaweed is some kind of high-end product, high-end food that is served in a hotel, a restaurant. They make it look very fancy. Orang kata kalau orang zaman sekarang bilang hipster lah. Okay, and normally they put it as macam perhiasan lah ataupun some sort of taste enhancer inside a main meal ataupun appetizer. Okay, look at this. Uh, some people in Japan, they make it as jeruk. Okay, jeruk rumpai laut. Dia orang campur dengan briny uh, sweet Japanese style salad ni maksudnya dia perap. Okay, dia perap dalam cuka and sometimes they put uh, pickled uh, mango. Okay, this one is actually served in Hawaii. Alright, okay, ada yang bilang lapar, ada yang cakap lapar, no. okay, nanti lepas ni boleh try order from Shopee or, or somewhere else, okay. This one very fancy, people in Hawaii treat uh, seaweed as jeruk, okay, pickled. And this one is pasta, okay, some people uh, make seaweed into pasta and they, they, they add on scallops, sometimes they, they add on abalone to make it very tasty, alright. So pasta, sometimes pasta can be made from seaweed all right and then seaweed smoothies okay it may sound weird but if you taste it if you combine the salty seaweed with the granny smith apple the green apple 
It tastes very nice. And those who are very health conscious, you can try this recipe at home, right? And then the healthy seaweed drink. If you want to switch, okay, from drinking too many boba tea in your life, okay, it's not a, a it's not a crime to drink boba tea, but maybe if you want to reduce the, the consumption of your boba tea, you can swap to healthy seaweed drink, okay? Because of the texture of the seaweed is actually just like uh, the coconut jelly, okay? It's, it's just jelly, the jellyish uh, texture is very good, very nice to be drink with cold water, all right? You can make it uh, cold, you can also make it warm, all right? This is very delicious, add with, orang bilang air kelapa, tambah dengan rumpai laut, very nice, okay? You can try this at home. And sometimes people make milky tea, milk tea, and then they, they put some this seaweed, okay? They cut this dry seaweed that have been soaken overnight and put inside the milk tea. It's very nice. Just try it, okay? And then, ee, ha, this one you have to look at other seaweed products. Oh, saya tengok komen ni, dia kata, andai saja sekarang ni tengah bulan puasa. Uh, Alhamdulillah tidak bulan puasa. So, people can enjoy, okay? <laughs> All right, uh, look at this agar-agar classic. If you ever use this agar-agar, this type of agar-agar, okay, uh, this agar-agar is very classic. Okay, during years ago, zaman mak-mak kita dulu, ramai orang guna uh, this uh, seaweed type lah untuk buat agar-agar before the powder form exists. Okay, they use this type of seaweed to make agar-agar or jelly or pudding. And then we also have vegan gelatin that is made from seaweed. Okay, whoever those who are health conscious, Okay, yang fancy-fancy nak jaga kesihatan ni ataupun yang memang alert dengan kesihatan, if you love to use gelatin in your food or in your drink, you can opt for vegan gelatin. Alright? And then in santan, hmm, whoever love to cook, okay, if you ever use kara santan, I believe if if you are mothers out there or if you are if you are a cook or if you are a chef, <laughs> some people prefer to use kara santan because of the taste, okay? Inside the kara santan, they also use what we call carrageenan, okay, a compound extracted from seaweed. Also, we have seabird nest, okay, this one, if you love to eat uh, jelly, something yang, yang very uh, soupy, but very cold, uh, but eat, eaten cold, tambah ice, this is very nice, okay, sometimes the, the Chinese people, they love to eat the seabird nest, okay, and they think it, it, it has some kind of uh, medicinal properties, lah. okay, it's their belief, and sometimes, uh, other people also consume this seabird nest, okay? Soy milk, okay? Inside the soy milk also we have carrageenan as part of the ingredient, okay? Carrageenan is from seaweed ataupun rumpai laut, okay? If you go to Indonesia or in Japan, they have seaweed salad on the go, okay? Just grab like Maggie Mee, but this one is quite healthy, okay? Just grab the seaweed salad and uh, enjoy it on the go, okay? And then we have healthy seaweed snack. If you like to eat keropok, Okay, just to replace a bit from the junk food, you can enjoy the healthy seaweed snack. It's very delicious. You can have so many flavors on it. You have different options, varieties of options, whatever flavor that you want, people will produce out there in the market, right? And then you also have seaweed crisps. Okay, nowadays I can see people started to use, uh, to make repet rumpai laut lah. Macam-macam, you can find it out there. Go, just go to Shopee, just click whatever you want to buy, okay? If you have enough money, all right? And then seaweed noodles, okay? Mi rumpai laut, very interesting. This one also people who are health conscious, they will go for seaweed noodle. And then the, the latest product, okay? In Semenanjung, the, the founder is from Semenanjung. You can find the latest uh, technology from Japan, okay? Uh, the Malaysian uh, entrepreneur, they produce a shrink lato. This is very interesting. The lato is shrink inside the packaging. When you pop it out, bring it out from the packaging, when you soak it inside a water, it will come out like fresh lato. Okay, this one is very interesting. I think it will, uh, it, it is sold, I think 15 ringgit per packaging. I'm not sure, but you can find it online. Uh, it's massive everywhere. It's been market, marketed everywhere nowadays. Okay. And then we have seaweed seasoning. This one is in Europe. This one is in Ireland, okay? They produce from Irish moss, uh, the Condress crispus. They produce healthy seasoning. Okay, this one, if you don't want to use MSG or Ajinomoto, you can replace it with seaweed seasoning. I think that's it from my presentation today, okay? 
Haha, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for listening and happy trying at home. I hope you enjoy my presentation and I hope you can try yourself uh, your own recipe with seaweed. So please, please appreciate our seaweed. Okay, hargai rumpai laut, our marine resources that we have in our country and also in other country. Please appreciate your marine resources and use it for your own uh, benefit. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you very much for listening to my talk today. Terima kasih kepada Puan atas sesi pembentangan dan perkongsian yang begitu menarik, berinformatik dan sangat sesuai bagi adik-adik yang berminat untuk berkecimpung dalam bidang sains marin terutamanya akakutur. Bagi sesi soal jawab ini, kami akan kami ingin jemput sekiranya ada di antara peserta sekiranya ingin bertanya boleh unmutekan mikrofon anda dan boleh bertanyakan terus. Buat masa ini, kami akan bacakan beberapa soalan di dalam ruang cek untuk dijawab oleh penceramah jemputan pada hari ini. Soalan pertama, uh, does seaweed can live at surface? Saya jawablah kan? Okay, for the yeah. first question, uh, does seaweed live on the surface? Mm, is it surface of the sea? <laughs> uh, not really on the surface lah. It has to be some depth like uh, maybe 0 0.5 meter inside the water. Not really ampai-ampai orang bilang uh, tersadai di di, uh, di permukaan laut. It needs to be deep inside the sea water juga. Okay, to be cultivated. Alright, does that answer the question? I'm reading actually comment from YouTube. Okay, does that answer the question? Okay, hopefully. <laughs> hey. Uh, does seaweed enter it? Sorry, does seaweed what? Uh, the seaweed endangered. Endangered? Oh, some yeah. of the species may be, but uh, very rare lah to see. But the one in Malaysia, they are not endangered species. So you can enjoy it as far as we still have it in Malaysia. And as far as it's not endangered species lah. Okay, some species may be endangered, those who are, those who did not uh, high in existence lah. The occurrence is very low. They might be endangered, but you can look at the list produced by IUCN. I think very uh, quite few lah yang endangered. Okay, most of it yang we we daily consume are cultivated, meaning people produce it. People produce it uh, in tang dalam tangki dan dalam dalam uh, perairan laut. Okay, so you can enjoy it. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Uh, so ada ketiga pula. Uh, I heard that the purple color seaweed are more precious than the green one. Is it true? I always receive this kind of question. What are the difference between purple, green, and white, or maybe transparent seaweed? Actually, they are not much difference. In terms of nutrients, they're almost similar. It's just that the, the coloration during the drying process differ. Okay, it doesn't matter if you took a purple seaweed, a green seaweed, or maybe white seaweed or transparent seaweed. But just to be careful, sometimes people out there, they will color the dry seaweed so just be careful all right make sure the color is uh, it looks natural it's not being added okay so just make sure that kind of thing does not happen to you all right regardless purple green or transparent it doesn't matter as long as you consume the seaweed it's good enough okay uh, so I come back pula. it says seaweed are good to bond joint is it true Seaweed good for bone joint, maksudnya 
uh, rumpai laut bagus untuk uh, apa panggil join ni uh, untuk tulang lah kan? Ya. Yeah. Okay. Actually, seaweed ada minerals. Okay. Dia dia boleh menjadi makanan tambahan untuk bantu kita uh, boost up the collagen, uh, collagen ni untuk uh, bone join lah. Okay. Boost up collagen pro uh, production in our body. So, uh, antara vitamin yang bagus yeah. untuk uh, boost up collagen production adalah vitamin C. Okay, uh, some kind of amino acid yang ada dalam makanan. And seaweed juga ada amino acid too, which is quite uh, uh, sufficient or substantial amount untuk kita makan dan membantu production, uh, collagen production in our body. Okay, alright. Okay. Uh, I just Uh, if we don't eat seafood, uh, can we taste the seaweed? Okay, first of all, I'm not a medical doctor. So, first of all, have to consult with your medical doctor. But if you have allergic to seafood, maybe you can avoid lah to eat seaweed. But you have to consult with your uh, medical doctor first lah. Okay, whatever food uh, that you can consume or you could not consume. Okay, uh, sometimes ada orang allergic udang, tapi dia boleh makan rumpai laut. So, this allergies condition is actually uh, differ from, uh, so, setiap orang lain-lain dia punya allergic. So, you can, uh, you can test with your doctor and look either you are allergic to rumpai laut ataupun tidak. But please, please jumpa doktor dulu, baru you boleh makan, okay. Tapi yang kesihatan okay, tak ada masalah, bolehlah makan sikit-sikit, okay. Jangan overdose, apa saja makanan, jangan overdose, okay. Uh, how does seaweed grow? Seaweed grow tumbuh macam tumbuhan juga. Okay, mereka melalui fotosintesis. Okay, bila mereka melalui fotosintesis, cukup makanan, cukup tenaga, mereka akan grow. Tapi berbeza ikut spesies. Ada seaweed yang uh, grow uh, dengan pertambahan what we call talus ataupun stem ataupun dahan. Okay, ada yang memanjang, ada tumbuh meninggi. Okay, it depends on the species. But it's very interesting to see macam mana rumpai laut tumbuh. If you are interested, please, please visit our institute one day if the COVID-19 is, uh, orang kata reda. Okay, uh, then we can show you some of the seaweed species that we have in UMS. Okay. Yes, Teresia. Uh, does seaweed produce nutrient for us when we eat it? They have nutrients. <laughs> they do not produce nutrient for us. Okay, they supply nutrients for us. They have uh, some kind of nutrients that might be beneficial for us. Okay, uh, like I mentioned before in my presentation, they have vit uh, vitamins, they have minerals, they have uh, some sort of proteins, uh, carbohydrates that might be beneficial for human being. Okay, that is some kind of nutrition that we need and sufficient for our health. All right. Okay. Uh, does the normal seaweed we eat same as seaweed? Sorry, does the normal seaweed we eat is same as? Uh, does the normal seaweed we eat same as seaweed? Seaweed. Seaweed. Adakah uh, rumpai laut yang kita makan sekarang ni sama yang macam rumpai laut yang di laut tu? Oh ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. <laughs> Maksudnya yang kita makan ni sama saja. Kadang-kadang orang keringkan. Ah then kita makan. Ada yang fresh. Siapa yang duduk di kawasan laut tu beruntung. Ah dia boleh petik saja dari laut and then dia makan. Yang tanam lah. Tapi kalau yang suka pergi diving, pergi menyelam, we can go diving. You can find varieties of seaweed. Tapi tak semua seaweed kita boleh makan. Kena hati-hati. Takut ada seaweed yang ada tajam-tajam tu macam duri-duri sikit. Ah itu avoid sikit lah. And some seaweed juga ada yang, saya nampak ada soalan tadi dia tanya ada tak seaweed yang poisonous. Some seaweed may contain toxin. So just be careful, just makan yang memang researcher dah dah kaji, yang memang uh, penyelidik dah kaji, oh ni bagus untuk nutrition. Okay, just be careful, seaweed yang rare ni hati-hati. Ha. Makanan eksotik ni kena hati-hatilah, takut nanti dia ada toxin. Sebab rumpai laut ni sifat dia dia menyerap everything from the sea. So we have to be selective lah uh, dalam spesies mana yang kita makan. Okay. Okay, itu sahaja. 
Uh, untuk maklumat pautan pendaftaran dan ECJ telah dikongsi untuk pelajar sekolah dan pelajar UMS, boleh isikan maklumat anda dan sila jawab sedikit borang maklum balas ringkas yang disediakan. Semua pelajar akan menerima ECJ dan mata STP akan diberikan untuk pelajar UMS. Dan akhir sekali, terima kasih sekali lagi diucapkan kepada Puan Mahir Datul atas jawapan soalan-soalan tersebut serta pembentangan yang begitu berinformasi sebentar tadi. Terima kasih juga kepada semua yang hadir atas sokongan anda. Dengan ini, sesi web, web, webinar akan tamat dan sila sertai kami di sesi-sesi akan datang bagi topik-topik lain. Terima kasih semua yang hadir. Semoga kita berjumpa di sesi yang akan datang. Dengan ini, kami akhiri sesi ini dengan ucapan sekian. Terima kasih.